give a quick scenario for you. Like, because I've always thought about this from the degree. You're walking with your child past 125th. You see a homeless man, same color as us. Y'all kids ask y'all, why are they there and we here? Oh, how come they look like us and they can be like that and we walk past them? What do you guys say to them? Like, how would you describe them? I'm going to answer that anyway. Um, I was homeless at one time in my life. You know, sometimes uh, situations happen in one's life where the journey goes the other way and uh, you find yourself in another situation. So that's probably the reason why, that's probably why I would tell my son. Because my sons know that I was homeless. They know I was a crack smoking bum at one time in my life. And uh, the, the passion I have for other people is because of where I come from. Like I told you, my mother had eight boys and six girls. We were always hungry. We were poor, but we were happy. Happy poor black people, you know? So I took that energy with me everywhere I went to help somebody else so they could never have to feel what I felt. But we're going to see it. We're going to have to make a decision right there. That's all I can tell you. I think, I know, I know we got to go quickly, right? But I just wanted to add to the question that you asked because um, it, it touches a, a real deep place for me. So we were on, I think we were 42nd Street, and um, we were walking across, you know that big church where so usually a lot of people experience homelessness that sit there. My daughter and I, Miracle is here tonight, we were walking by, and she asked that very same question, Mommy, what is going on here, and why, why are they sleeping there? And that began the conversation of people experiencing homelessness in a place that she knew to be one of the richest places in the world, mm -hmm. right? People that look like her that slept outside. I said, okay, now that you see what the, what the problem is, what solution do you have for that problem? And so maybe about eight months later, she started her first company called Style by Miracle, by which she takes the proceeds and she feeds people experiencing homelessness and started a second one so that she can begin to make villages that have housing for people of color experiencing homelessness. And so I'm grateful for your question because my the only thing that I could think to do was ask her how she would solve the problem that she's identified. And um, she's nine now, going on 32. Um, <laughs> but thank you for, your, for that question. Thank you. You know, it's very interesting what you guys are discussing tonight. Again, I had no idea how powerful this was going to be. And talking about people that don't care, can I share just a quick little short, real quick question? Oh, okay. My question is, um, in regards to the gun violence and the issues that we're facing right now, do you guys have actual plans or implemented any type of laws? I know you're running for office, correct, sir? Have, um, you're serving now and... Okay, okay, perfect. Have you guys done anything or created any laws or actual um, amendments or anything that could stick to some of the problems that we're having and you can come back to these issues? And afterwards, I would like to talk to you guys personally. Alright, so um, in response to Ms. Anaya's question, um, I haven't personally drafted any particular bills on um, legislation because you do know as a regular citizen, you can draft a bill that goes into resolution that then gets sent to the different bodies, whether it's city or state or federal, which I've worked on all um, levels of legislation to protect community. But um, I think one of the most things that's important in this scenario is prevention. 
Everybody in the count of three, say prevention. One, two, three. Prevention. One, two, three. Prevention. Because it's hard to do the root canal when you could have just brushed your teeth. So brushing the teeth is the prevention, right? And understanding that $80 billion a year on a system that incarcerates people is not working. How can you refunnel that money into community to make sure that you're safe? And so, yes, we have worked on many, many, many campaigns, and I'll be glad to share. How you doing? Um, I want to thank you all for, for, for doing the work that y'all are doing, and um, thank everyone else for being here, for you could be any place else in the world. Right? Um, as a victim of gun violence, right, um, and and as a as a product of my environment, um, learning the things that I've learned when I was a teenager, um, being incarcerated at an early age, I know that some of the things that some of the things that we experienced was actual learned behavior, right? Um, and then we we face this thing with gun violence where um, our own people are being locked up for things that they learned throughout generations. Um, and we push to, to, to have them incarcerated for things like gun violence when we know that there's a bigger issue, right? Um, as I've heard many of you um, say. So I want to know um, what what is it that that you would put into place that can actually help young men and young ladies um, that, that's growing up in these environments to understand that gun violence is an issue. Well, thanks for that question and information, brother, because I'm on the same page with you about that. Um, I think one of the things that I would do um, once elected into Congress, is to, my vision has been in the South Bronx to create a center, uh, the South Bronx Center for Self-Improvement, where it would not just consist of teaching you about not getting involved in gun violence, but everything else, dealing with men and female relationship, dealing with health, dealing with everything that we deal with in our lives and how to conduct ourselves as best citizens in our community. How to learn to help one another. How to learn to rebuild the our community instead of destroy it. But we have to bring in the funding because all of these things result down to the money. Where does it come from? So I would definitely run and my priority would be is will be to pour the money in to our communities to address these issues you talk about. And one of the biggest injustices that we a lot of us are turning our heads from is the criminal justice reform. This is so important of what's going on in this country right now. If you see the way people, young black men and Latino men are suffering in the prison systems from minor Chuck crimes and being sent away because they didn't have fear of representation and what's going on with their mothers or parents could really do much for them. And you, you know what I'm talking about. You know, and, and the injustice of the mental health situation that's going on in the prison system and the neglect and so on. That's a priority issue in our communities and in our country right now. And the presidential candidates are all, all of a sudden talking about it. I met mean, no President Trump uh, signed into law the, this new second chance act or whatever it's called. But what's it? First step act, right? It was another one. First step act, which was just like a facade. You know what I mean? It's just like a do window shopping. You know, and it's it could have went deeper. He probably did it politically to show that he cares, but it went nowhere to help us in our communities. So I would be 100% into seeing that funding comes to where it needs to be so that we can hire professionals and people who could make a change in the community, come in and do the job. I mean, everybody, we need to have professionals in to do it, but who's going to pay for it? So let's go into office 
give our taxpayer dollars and bring the thinking back home to our community. Okay. something. Um, what I would do, one of the things, you know, I, I, I personally uh, feel strongly about is that from kindergarten, maybe even through college, maybe even through uh, graduate school, bring civics back. Yes. Civics back in the school. You're not making, my kids are not getting, you know, there used to be a conversation that grandma used to have at the kitchen table. You know, that was more powerful than anything that we could have gotten. The teacher's job was to teach us, you know, reading, writing, and arithmetic, we used to call it back then. Because we didn't need <coughs> teachers to teach us civics, manners, and opening the, the door. We got that at home, grandma, or whatever. That's not happening now. So, um, civics, they got rid of civics. They got rid of home economics. They got rid of shop class and you know, okay, so right. you know put those things back in the school. Right. You know, you know, okay, you want to keep that up, you know, that's a big issue right there, but we'll just put civics back in school. You know, you, 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 you gotta have you, you gotta have that. And the reason it's practical and it makes sense because it will show you that um, people who get ahead don't get ahead because they're smart and STEM, but they, but they they have what's known as emotional intelligence. That's right. That's more in terms of surviving as a human being yes. as a viable um, um, you know human entity. It's more important for me to be able to get along with you than it is for me to know more than you do because we're gonna wind up arguing. You know. But I have to be able to learn, know how to contain my temper, hold my emotions, you know, be able to have a conversation without developing into a comp, you know, combat situation. So put civics back in school. And that's one of the things we have to do, uh, uh, have our politicians, you know, uh, advocate for us. Thank you. back to your question, um, I think that programming within the communities also helps, you know, within organizations. I think that you have to start teaching the youth about their rights, about things that they need to know, like when you saw in the, in, I don't know if you saw the clips of the, the video, the movies that we saw, the, um, the screenings, but in one of them, in the second one, when they were questioning them. So had you been a board member of the Kali Braga Foundation, you know, one of the things that people don't realize is that you see these clips and these kids don't know their rights. You should know that you don't have to speak to an officer when they take you in that room. You should know that when an officer stops you that you can say, are you arresting me? Am I free to go? Like these are things that they should know about and things that they should be taught about, like your rights. When I did some work with Senator um, Hamilton in Brooklyn, you know, he handed out these cards to the youth that would tell them, you know, they ask you this, you say that, or whatever, you know, whatever the case may be. You know, it's a small step into, granted, it doesn't stop the gun violence, but in learning the process of what your rights are, it helps you to defend yourself in many instances. That even if you get caught up in certain situations, at least you know your rights. And that's a major thing for our young black and brown, especially boys, is to know your rights. So one more question and then we started with a presentation for this young woman so we're going to allow her to ask the final question. Uh, the question that I would ask is Queen Mother, uh, Amadou Diallo, he was executed 41 times and I'm the mother who went along with Reverend Al Shopton and with Mrs. Uh, 
um, Mrs. Diano and the father to take the child back to in to our bay. What do you think we have in common with small arms in Africa and small arms here? What are the solution for all of us? What is the solution? Uh, what do we see then as a best practice that could relate to the United States Amadou execution from Africa, Guinea, and from execution having to our young people right here in Harlem? What do you see we can do in terms of a best practice? Because it's small arms that kill more people than anything. Right. Anyone up here? <clears throat> With regards to the small arms, um, Queen Mother, the first thing that comes to mind, number one, is that we're under attack, right? Um, and the fact that for some reason, the people that we are under attack by, we seem the most fearful in addressing. So it's so much easier, it seems, for Ray Ray to get retribution on John John than it is for us to collectively come together and say, well, you know what, some of this trauma that is being caused and how we see each other is based upon maybe every 12 seconds on my feed another execution from someone entitled to hold that gun on another black body. Having a conversation the other day with um, a, an official who puts a policy in places, but I don't know how we can reform the NYPD. I don't know how we can do that. Well, cut the paycheck off. When you kill one of us, handle it in a way that hurts them, maybe not in another punitive way, right? Because the eye for another thing still doesn't balance out. It still doesn't create peace and harmony or energy. Cut the paycheck off. Maybe that next officer will be less likely to take one of our sons or our daughters if they can't take their son and their daughter out to go frolic about the land and address it in a financial way. Cut that off. That's that's part of something I envision to be a solution, a handle that. Thank you. Okay, so this is really the speed now. Everyone gets 30 seconds, 30 seconds to finally say something that you didn't get a chance to say. And I will be taking the mic. I'm sorry that you guys are not here. Uh, I'd like to talk about what I do back at home in my community in Waterbury, Connecticut. Um, I've started a couple different initiatives where we have um, kids up from middle school, uh, elementary actually to high school, where we just, um, I do the basketball, where I train the kids do different camps, different tournaments, um, and just different things in the community, just to, especially throughout the summer, just to keep the kids safe, keep them out of harm's way, keep them out of trouble. Thank you. I'm honored to be on this panel with such powerhouses. Um, and I look forward to working with everyone and keep going on creating initiatives to keep fighting the bigger fight. Um, but there's one thing I do want to leave on everyone's mind to think of for the next time we think about gun violence and we think about school shootings. Why do we see it more in public schools than in private schools? Well, first of all, I just want to say it's been a pleasure. It's been a real pleasure. Grassroots organizations. Join a grassroots organization and get busy. Stop sitting on the sidelines. Join a grassroots organization. Get busy. Go join a garden and plant some fresh vegetables. You know, and, and, and take your friends with you. Hold your people accountable. And we ain't talking about the youth, we're talking about people in general. You understand what I'm saying? This is not about the youth, this is about all of us as a whole. 
take back your neighborhood, take back the blocks, and continue to give just because. I need everybody to repeat after me. It is our duty to fight for our freedom. It is our duty to fight for our freedom. It is our duty to win. It is our duty to win. We must love and protect one another. We must love and protect one another. We have nothing to lose but our chance. We have nothing to lose but our chance. And that is it. And that is it. Okay. I'm honored to have everybody to serve us on the panel here. And if you believe in what was said here tonight, and you support what was said here tonight, and if you want to become like the God and said that change that you wish to see, then join me as I take this fight to Congress. It's a real tough battle that's going on, but I'm telling you, right now, I don't believe there's anyone else in the race that I'm in right now in the South Bronx who has the compassion and heart, concern, and conviction to turn this thing around, to put the effort in, to put the work in, to bring the money home, and to do what we have to do. If you believe in that and want to make that change, Join me on Instagram, Stevenson, the number four Congress, Stevenson for Congress, and I'm on Twitter as well. Thank you all. The struggle continues. God bless. Thank you so much. Thank you, Tara, uh, Renee, for inviting me and uh, all the hard work she's done. And I just want to say thank you guys for um, allowing me to be a part of um, you know, this group. Thank you, everybody out here for your participation. Don't go anywhere. Don't go anywhere. Don't go, do not go anywhere. Um, we are going to show a short film, but before three minutes, a trailer, a trailer is three minutes. When we are closed, I just want to um, just recap on some solutions. One is, um, I know that Tabitha, she mentioned about the children know their rights. So for all male in here that's under the age of 25, I have some cards in here that says the 411 on 911. And this is about knowing your rights. So that's something that everyone, all the young guys who did one of these cards. I'm more 30, that's why. If I have that, show me. Okay, and the next and, and the next thing I want to talk about real quick is the NAA urge uh, Congress to pass safe and sensible gun safety legislation to help prevent mass killings and gun-related homicides for American children. There are 15 legislations that are in here. I do not have a copy, but you can take a picture of it. So when we talk about uh, what we're doing about legislation, these are some of the issues. But just to know that gun violence is the number one killer of African Americans ages 15 to 34. Uh, we are, thir only 13% of us in, are in the United States, 13% of African Americans. However, we have nearly 50% of all gun homicides for African Americans. So those are some numbers that we really have to do things, uh, something about, and legislation. So if you're not, if you do not have, a, uh, so if you're not registered to vote, you need to be registered to vote. Because that's how we're going to make changes here, is that we vote. Vote, 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 okay? So whoever's not registered, let me know. We have some registration cards, too. Awesome. All right, thank you. Thank you. Don't go nowhere, don't go nowhere. There's nine days of early voting. Yeah, nine days of early voting this year. So, so um, again, thank you so much, Tyler, for allowing me to come out here and be here for our of the program. A big round of applause to our distinguished panel. Thank you. Thank you. You're free to leave your throne temporarily. <laughs> and we're going to show this short 
After which you're free to network for a few minutes and then you want to wrap up a roll. But thank you all so very much. My name is Pamela Stewart Martinez. Um, I'm a schools and community activist. And what brought me here tonight was the fact that I live in a community where there's a lot of things that are happening against the people who reside in my community. Um, we are being deprived of a real education in our school system. We are being deprived of equal opportunities when it comes to housing. We are being deprived of um, income equality, the ability to gain income. And so what I'm hoping, we're gonna come up with solutions that will tackle these problems. Because when you have all of these deficits in, in a community, it can lead to violence. And the only way that we can stop the violence is to address all of these issues. So it was a wonderful event. I'm so glad that I came. I met so many people and I'm sure this is going to spark tons of solutions and uplift our communities. Harlem, Harlem, Harlem. What a night. 145th Street. West 145th Street. Uh, the H Loft. I'm so happy that I was able to come out here tonight. There is so much going on in Harlem and we really had to be a part of Stop the Violence. Stop the Violence. That's why I'm here for it. Stop the Violence. There were a lot of people discussing issues that really affect the community and I just had to be a part of this. Yeah, your girl Claudette, she's everywhere. For more information about me, you know where you can find me on my page on Facebook, Believe in Yourself video. But don't take my word for it. I'm going to go in. And we're going to speak to a few people, and I will be back after this commercial break. Stay close. I know we got to go quickly, right? But I just wanted to add to the question that you asked because um, it, it touches a, a real deep place for me. So we were on, I think we were I'm going to ride those waves full of passion. Yeah. Gonna take sweet misery for the ride Gonna ride till they take me higher or further Washing me on the inside We're here live at Red Lobster We got a beautiful young lady here named, I mean, a beautiful artist she, I hope she's, got, she's supposed to be going inside, do something And tell everybody your name and where you from Shadina Shavad, I'm from the Bronx, and I'm here to show Brother Earl some love for his birthday. We love you. So, how long you been an artist, darling? My whole life, 30 whole years. Life? And you from the BX? Well, welcome to my neighborhood. Yeah, don't tell your wife about it, because she might kill us. I mean, your husband. I mean, who that mean? Her wife, her husband. You know what I'm saying? And no rings? Okay, we can talk later. But, um... And so, I mean, we you heard about Red Lobster, life, you heard about the open mic, together, what was, when you heard now. about it, what and was your biggest thrill? What did you think? Right? Brother Earl, because Brother Earl? I know him from and other do, open mics, but together. I was like, so we, we need your to own thing, because he literally shows everyone love. Everybody all so, once I knew he was going to be hosting at Red Lobster, and I love Red Lobster, I'm a bartender of Harlem, I was just like, it's, it's a win-win. I'm going to see you, so I always try to swing by after work and show them love or grace the mic. Well, are you going to grace the mic for us tonight? Yeah. Oh, very good. What, are you going to be singing? I, I hope. To, no, spoken oh, words. Spoken words? <laughs> oh, God. You know what's going to happen when a woman speaks spoken words, y'all. Um, it's going to be sexy and sultry. I mean, look at this. I mean, she can be able to... Talk sweet to me, anything. Say something to me. Give me a, a short poem line from you. A short poem? Yeah. Okay. A very short one. Yes. 
black man, black man. Yeah. Why you love everything but me? <laughs> Anything lighter, you praise freely, but why you don't drink from my coffee? You know, being that we grew from the same tree, why have I been second guessing myself lately? Being that I've sacrificed for you so greatly. I have stretch marks on my belly, they are graze inside my hair. I have scars in my heart. I've lost hearing in one ear. I have spent my last on you, yeah, you play me like a fool. We don't mess with black girls, declared your whole crew. <laughs> Oh Lord, and you see the song he put on right behind it? Baby, she is so for real. We're here, we're live at Red Lobster. My name is Baby D, and this is Shadir. We love Baby D, and I got something, you know? This is something I got to say to you. You don't understand how much I love you, baby. Come on. How much I want to be your only man. We're going to dance this out, y'all. You know what he's saying? And baby, baby, baby. <laughs> I'm out, y'all. My name is Baby D. We're live at Red Lobster. Shouts to Mario and Claudette. <laughs> Evening. Peace and blessings, family. This is Brother Earl here once again at Red Lobster hosting Freedom of Speech Open Mic. Okay, the night is phonetic, phenomenal, and fantastic. The poets, the artists, the energy is just off the chain. We here each and every Monday, not every Monday, every Monday. Tell a friend to tell a friend to tell a friend. I mean, this is like, uh, this is just like, this is where you're supposed to be on Monday. I, I don't know where else you're supposed to be on Monday. The artist that, that performed is unbelievable. Okay? I'm here and, and grateful for the assistance of Diamond Video, Believe in Yourself Video. I mean, uh, Wordstock, my boys, Barry and Reg. This is a conglomerate, a consortium of artists, activists, and just lovers of communal economics, man. And we here. And the only thing that's missing is you. Hope to see you next week. Right here at Red Lobster, right next to the Apollo. I'm Brother Earl. One. Instagram, 
Stevenson, the number four Congress, Stevenson for Congress, and I'm on Twitter as well. Thank you all. The struggle continues. And God bless. And this is about knowing your rights. So that's something that everyone, all the young guys who did one of these cards. I'll do a 30, that's why. If I have an extra, you can give me an extra young lady. Okay, and the next and, and the next thing I want to talk about real quick is the NAA urge our Congress to pass safe and sensible gun safety legislation to help prevent mass killings and gun-related homicides for American children. There are 15 legislations that are in here. I do not have a copy, but you can take a picture of it. So when we talk about uh, what we're doing around legislation, these are some of the issues. But just to know that gun violence is the number one killer of African Americans ages 15 to 34. Uh, we are, thir only 13% of us in, are in the United States, 13% of African Americans. However, we have nearly 50% of all gun homicides for African Americans. So those are some numbers that we really have to do things, uh, something about, and legislation. So if you not, if you do not have, a, 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 so if you're not registered to vote, you need to be registered to vote. Because that's how we're going to make changes here, is that we vote. Vote, vote, vote. Okay? So whoever's not registered, let me know. We have some registration cards too. Awesome. All right, thank you. Thank you, Don't go over there, go over there. My name is Lynn Spivey and I'm the president of the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People, New York City Housing Authority branch. I'm here today at the African American Women in Seminar um, event. It's a film festival and this particular film festival is about anti-gun violence. And we are here to discuss solutions around gun violence. We saw three amazing films, brief films, but in addition to that we also had a panel discussion. I was the moderator of that panel and it was an outstanding panel. Each one had some input and we came up with some solution. And one of the things that I really want to say is that anyone who isn't registered to vote, registered, must go out and register. In addition to registering, you also need to go out to vote. Make sure you vote because there are legislations that are on the table that we must actually vote on in order for us to be able to be effective in resolving some of these problems. Thank you and God bless. So my name is Artist Up and I'm here out in Harlem on 145th Street just supporting the cause because without support is not really much you can do. Um, actually, this Tuesday coming up, the 27th, I'm holding an event that I received um, funding for, my first grant from the mayor's office to help prevent gun violence. So, you know, being taking part in things like this is just a major, major thing in the community. So I want everybody to come out and support. Uh, community Affairs will be there, many people from the community, Credible Messengers, Tuesday, 6.30, Applebee's. Um, it's called Artist Up, Guns Down, which is an extension to the already open mic that goes on every single Tuesday to help bring awareness to mental health in the black and brown community. So I'm just happy to be a part of the solution uh, and be proactive instead of reactive. So let's end gun violence all together. Let's stay together, stick together, and let's do what we have to do to uh, take our part in the community. So yours truly, Artist Up, loving you all the time. See you Tuesday at 6.30, Applebee's on Fordham Road on the second floor. Stop the violence! Stop the violence! Stop 
so violent. Hi, my name is Tara Renee. I am the president of African American Women in Cinema, and we just hosted our second encore uh, program of the African American Women in Cinema Anti-Gun Violence Film Screening Program. It was so important that we did this due to the mass shootings that's been going on in our country and certainly within our community. So we thought that we had to bring the community together along with community leaders to talk possible solutions, tangible solutions that the community at large can take. And our goal and our objective is to at least save one life. If we can at least save one life, then we are on a start to something great. So we appreciate the community embracing us, the community leaders coming and sharing and voicing insight and truths that we can all walk away with something tangible that we can make it applicable to bring about a change and certainly, hopefully, save a life. Thank you. Hi, good evening, it's your girl and I, A, live. And I am the founder of Neighborhood Violence Survivors Alliance. The reason I'm here at this amazing space is because I wanted to share about my up and coming press conference that's gonna be on the steps of City Hall on Tuesday, September the 3rd at 11 a.m. I need Believe in Yourself, Miss Claudette, and all the people that were here this evening at the African American Women in Cinema event to be at this event. I was a victim of somebody menacing me. I had to jump out of my bedroom window at 3.30 in the morning on April 11, 2017. Why? Because there was something that happened in my apartment before I moved in. But I didn't let this distract me or deter me from what God has for me. And I'm fighting back every day. So, on the 3rd of September, meet me on the steps of City Hall. And let's work together to combat neighborhood violence. Thank you so much. And I look forward to hearing from you. My, I can be reached at nvsanyc at gmail.com. Or you can go to Facebook at Neighborhood Violence Survivors Alliance or Instagram at NVSA NYC to contact me, Anaya A. God bless you and continue to believe in yourself. everyone. As, my name is Eric Stevenson. I'm a candidate for United States Congress, 15th District in the South Bronx. Um, I'm a former New York State Assembly member there, and we're running because, you know, it's time that it's overdue for change now. We can't continue on having the gun violence in our communities. We can't keep making excuses for all the many funerals that's going on for our young. We can't keep making excuses for all of the homelessness that's coming out of high-priced uh, um, developments coming into our communities. No more affordable housing is existing. We have to stand up now. No one's standing up to power. But that's why I have to stand back up and run to, to fight for our community. I ask you to join me as I run for Congress um, to, uh, 20, 20 in, in June. And I'm on Instagram, Stevenson, the number four, Congress. That's S-T-E-V-E-N-S-O-N, the number four, Congress. Send me a message. Joining this movement is a movement for us, not me, us. I am you, you are me. Let's join together and work together because we need change and we need it now. Thank you all and God bless. This shirt, Jeremiah Draper. Jeremiah was murdered on May 15th of this year in St. Nicholas Houses on at approximately 9:30 something at night. He was only 15 years old. He suffered from a gunshot wound to the head. My petition that I have started against NYCHA is because the conditions, the unsafe conditions they have us living under, are allowing criminals to come in and harm us and kill us. 
They cannot find my son's killer because of the scaffolding and the mesh they have blocking the camera's view. It was three cameras facing Jeremiah that night and it's impossible to imagine that none of these cameras can aid in his killer's arrest. Please go to change.org to sign the petition entitled Security for NYCHA Tenants. Once you put that in, his picture will come up on the petition. Please sign. Please help me stop this madness and disrespect of our people. Thank you. Have a good night. Stop the violence, please, at all costs. Please stop the violence. We love each other and we need each other. Please stop violence. This has been a very interesting event and the ideas were very well taken and with all of the things that were expressed today, something positive is going to come out of this event. Thank you. It was an honor to be here. Thank you. It's really crazy out here. We, we gotta, we gotta get our youth. Oh, thank you. We have to get our youth the last longer to fight for the future of us because my peers are the generation of this country, and we need more strong, fired up kids and youth to be ready to fight the battle because it, it's not only warfare, it's spiritual warfare, it's the mental warfare, and we need to get it correct for it be the end of us. Thank you. Stop the violence. Uh, beloved family, my name is Shaniqua Charles, Executive Director and Founder of Miss Abby's Kids, a youth development nonprofit that services the Northeast Bronx and abroad. Also, the co founder of Never Be Cave, ending mass incarceration through the investment in our youth and what it looks like to reinvest money used right now to incarcerate people and giving young people what they need in order to avoid the justice system altogether. Because the truth is, if you can't get my child in a cage, then you can never get them back in a cage. Tonight we just screened three remarkable films on the subject of gun violence. And one thing that I know we can't leave out of this space today without thinking about completely is the fact that our community is the only one that experiences violence and is called black on black violence. But when we are killed by officials and by others, that seems to be regular. And so the traumas in our communities are not addressed. The emotional lacking is not addressed. The scholastic divestment is not addressed. And so through all of our organizations coming together, grassroots, taking our communities back, being on the forefront, standing on the corner with the people that we think are causing a problem, but also pouring love and light into them and saying that we understand it is not intentional. And here are some ways that we can get around it and live longer. That is a greater solution than any. Thank you so much. Peace and, peace and blessings, family. I am Queen Mother Dr. DeLuise Blakely. I'm the Community Mayor of Harlem and the Ambassador of Goodwill to Africa. Tonight, this was a great discussion in our community about anti-gun violence and how are we going to deal with the small arms, discussing amongst ourselves and coming up with a solution. We had the international community also to join us and we just adore of us telling our own stories and our dearly beloved sister Renee Tara Tara Renee and we can call her Renee Tara or Tara Renee she understand African women in filmmaking and cinema telling our stories and going around the United States hearing this story and putting it on screen for us to discuss is the best way to resolve our issues and also hearing the voice from the international community Sherry in Harlem from Burundi the massacre that took place and for the young people sharing their stories on film is a way that we will resolve our issues and our discussion. It's been a great evening here in Harlem, looking at the issue, confronting the issue head on, 
and begin the healing that we must do with each other with peace love and security of each other we are divine family here at the H loft on West 145th Street in Harlem issues that affect us as a community gun violence all these young people that are dying we need to come together as a community we need to come together as one as a people and end it enough of this violence enough of these killings enough of mothers crying over their kids enough of these pictures with all these 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 dead young people let's stop this let's come together and end this this is Claudette for believe in yourself video believe in yourself let's let's get this done let's just end this craziness love you guys to pieces continue to watch believe in yourself video on my page on Facebook